Hello, this is Mel Thompson, and this is a podcast in a series of podcasts about political risk. Today I'll be discussing the Law of the Sea Treaty. Let me just first say that treaties are very, very vital to mitigating and limiting political risk. Within treaties, you have protections that you don't always have in total when it comes to contracts. In fact, you need treaties to back the contracts up. The contracts provide very, very specific protections that mitigate political risk. The treaties provide more of a universal protection. And they also allow you to internationalize the risk within the contracts, thus making the treaties more important when you need to enforce a, uh, an arbitration or even a court case to try to uh, recoup any damages from a political risk. Having said that, the problem that I see with the United States not having signed this treaty is that it creates a lot of open space that is very, very volatile for political risk when it comes to foreign direct investors and other types of individuals who do any type of investment, trading, or interaction that involves the sea. China is about to go before a tribunal in The Hague. And it's about to be a ruling, I should say, actually, um, on, a, on a territorial dispute in the South China Sea. And this one in particular deals with the dispute that is uh, germane to China and the Philippines. And China already said that we, they're just not going to abide by whatever the ruling is if it's against them. The treaty would certainly have provided some degree of protection for foreign direct investors if they, if the United States had signed on to it. The U.S. has not accepted this treaty because of opposition from Republicans in the Senate, where treaties must be approved. And the failure to act on this has now become even more problematic because of the South China Sea problem. So anything that has to do with the South China Sea, or in, in, by extension, Asia, when it comes to sea transport of goods, anything such as uh, the transportation of large items that you have an investment in and uh, land investments that rely upon services, I'm sorry, uh, products being shipped in, these things are have a much higher political risk associated with them because we have not signed this treaty. The arguments against signing this treaty are completely ridiculous. There is absolutely no good reason not to sign a treaty. This is one treaty in particular that would cover losses on, and make them more easy to fix, if, if for lack of a better word, more easy to recoup losses if something went wrong within the host nation. And we're talking about things that are above and beyond the contracts that need to be put in place when you do uh, uh, business abroad. The U.S. would not be in the same situation that it's in right now. It would actually have a more legally stable framework for getting to the bottom of losses when it comes to their nationals if we would sign on to this treaty. So my entire point here is this. If you look at the totality of some of the treaties that we do have in force, some of the bilateral investment treaties, the tax treaties, what they do is provide an international framework whereby it is known that these are the rules of the road. In any other agreement that can and will protect the foreign direct investor will be covered even more so by the trees. Because it, in, if you internationalize your agreements, you basically say that they need to be heard in the sense of somehow under international law. And when you do that and there's a treaty in place, 
that provides another layer of protection. The U.S. has more to gain by formally signing this treaty than it has by staying out of it. Mainly because of what's going on right now, the instability, the uncertainty in Asia, particularly in the South China Sea, and the fact that China has basically said, no matter what the Hague says, no matter what the tribunal says, we're going to keep doing what we're doing. There needs to be a better understanding by the Senate Republicans as to how they're actually hurting business as opposed to saving money for the American taxpayer. This has been Mel Thompson.